Can six months of smart training turn you from average to elite cyclist? No. But when I asked myself that question, I discovered hidden strategies that can fast track your progress. You see, if you want to ride faster for longer, you need to understand the science-backed strategies that top cyclists use to improve faster than others. Over the last decade, I've dug deep into countless studies on cycling training and energy systems. So in this video, I'm going to share the hidden strategies to increase your FTP or critical power. I'll show you exactly how to use these strategies in your own training to transform from a decent cyclist into a great one. Let's dive into the training specificity rule, a principle that's transformed cyclists that I've coached in just four weeks. But to really take advantage of this rule, you need to know what happens in your muscles during intense cycling. Now, I know it's not the sexiest thing in the world, but stick with me here, I'll keep it simple. As you ride harder, your body relies on more carbohydrate breakdown for energy. This process, while quick, produces hydrogen ions and lactate. Contrary to popular belief, lactate isn't harmful. It's actually a potential energy source. The real culprit is hydrogen ions, which cause muscle acidity and fatigue. Understanding this process is key to improving your cycling performance. Professional coaches use this knowledge to structure training, and I'll show you how to leverage them too. Now that we understand lactate better, how do we use it to get faster, and what's all of this got to do with training specificity? Well, at certain points in your training season, there will be decisions needed to be made based on what type of race or event you are preparing for, and also your weaknesses. For example, in criteriums or punchy road races, you'll need to handle surges in intensity, or on the other hand, time trials or grand fondos require more steady state efforts. This is where traditionally you might choose over unders for racing or steady state intervals for grand fondos, but not anymore. Let me guide you through the new thinking around training specificity and listen carefully as this might be new information. To improve your lactate threshold power as a cyclist, you need to focus on two areas, reducing lactate production and improving lactate clearance. Reducing lactate production involves increasing your aerobic capacity, how long you can ride for. Improving lactate clearance, on the other hand, requires higher intensity training. This challenges your body's lactate transport systems and stimulates adaptation. And here's where it gets interesting. Let's look at a sample training week from the semi-pro cycling threshold level three intermediate plan. Before we get into the workouts, there's one crucial element we need to discuss. Because getting this wrong might leave you fatigued and unable to progress your training week after week. And this element is how to structure a threshold training week. Here's how I do it according to science. In this threshold training plan from Team Semi Pro, do you see something different from a common training week? The interval training days are on Tuesday and Friday. Scheduling hard days on Tuesday and Friday is a strategic approach that optimizes recovery and performance. This structure provides two full days between hard efforts, crucial for managing both central fatigue, impacting the nervous system, and peripheral fatigue, affecting muscles, as highlighted by Halson in 2014. Other scientists also emphasize that HIIT training is most effective when athletes are well recovered, allowing for maximal performance and adaptation. And the idea that spreading out high intensity sessions over the week improves performance by reducing the risk of overtraining. A Tuesday, Thursday schedule may not provide enough recovery, leading to residual fatigue, which can hinder both endurance and neuromuscular adaptations. The Tuesday Friday split ensures fresher legs for both sessions, preserving training quality. Now this is where it gets a bit wonky, but from experience, Bomper's 1999 guidelines offer additional insight, estimating that threshold workouts typically require 48 to 72 hours of recovery due to their high glycogen depletion making them more demanding in recovery than VO2 max or anaerobic efforts. It's worth noting that Bomper's estimates, while useful, are generalized and serve as more of a guide than a hard rule. Now we know how to structure our threshold training week, the next question becomes what types of workouts do we need to do if we don't want to waste our time actually getting the most benefit for each and every session we complete? 
Well, we need sessions that are aimed at increasing lactate threshold or supporting the extra adaptations we are aiming for. In this case, neuromuscular adaptations. Looking at the training plan, let's start with the least complicated sessions, long endurance rides, aimed at reducing lactate production because this is done by increasing your aerobic capacity. This means more mitochondria in your muscle cells and better mitochondrial function. Long, low intensity rides are great for this. Now, I've spoken about my approach to endurance sessions and how different levels of cyclists benefit from riding zone two at different percentages. For an intermediate cyclist, this is the middle of zone two or 60 to 70% of critical power. Then there's over-unders, the main focus of this block. For race specific fitness, over-under intervals are great, but they shouldn't be your only type of training. These intervals mix short, intense efforts above your threshold with easier periods just below it. This mimics the challenging intensities you'll experience during races. Over-under intervals have two main benefits. The first one is that they help your body handle and clear lactate more effectively, which is important for racing. And the second one is they also stimulate your neuromuscular system and engage fast twitch muscle fibers. This combination of effects makes over-under intervals a powerful tool for improving your racing performance. When comparing these to steady state efforts, there's no clear winner out of both these methods, but they do train the body in a completely different way. Over-under intervals are designed to flood your body with lactate during the over phase, then train it to clear lactate efficiently during the under phase. By repeatedly flooding and then clearing your muscles with lactate, these intervals promote quicker and more efficient lactate management. This improvement delays the point at which lactate accumulates and lowers the blood and muscle pH, ultimately increasing your ability to sustain higher power outputs for longer durations. Key elements for effective over-under intervals include Ensure your threshold represents your true lactate threshold, your LT2, because inaccurate estimates can lead to ineffective workouts. For the over, aim for 115 to 120% of critical power. Some programs use as low as 103%, which may be insufficient if your threshold estimate is off. For the under, generally 80 to 85% of CP for two to three minutes. Studies show optimal lactate clearance occurs from 60 to 80% of threshold. It's beyond this video, but there are some specific athlete specific adjustments. For example, more glycolytic athletes, example sprinters, should reduce the under intensity as they produce lactate more readily than endurance specialists. Interval structure, consider shorter 30 to 60 second higher intensity overs with longer two to three minute lower intensity unders for optimal lactate shuttling and clearance. Remember, effectiveness isn't always correlated with perceived difficulty. Focus on the physiological adaptations rather than how hard the workout feels. Steady state sessions are included here for balance. Though not the primary focus, they help test power and train lactate tolerance. Lactate tolerance training involves extended periods at or above lactate threshold, and it helps to acclimate to discomfort from elevated lactate levels. This has both a physiological and a psychological benefit, particularly for races and grand fondos. And while I've reduced the use of classic steady state progressions due to their lower effectiveness, compared to over-unders, they still have value for improving sustained power and mental endurance. I've also evolved to an adaptive approach to these intervals, allowing riders to extend intervals based on how they feel, maximizing time at threshold intensity while providing flexibility for the athlete. Back to specificity in training for a moment. For me, it now means using both steady state and over under intervals, adjusting based on individual needs. The mix of these sessions depends on your starting point for each of these and your goal event. With no real perfect answer, it's about finding your training balance, but what I've laid out here is a great starting point for anyone that hasn't done this before. And now that you know how to structure your training and which workouts to do to ride faster for longer, you need to learn how you can ride effectively in endurance rides and adjust for changes as you go. To learn exactly how to do that, you should watch this next video.